of a surprise to the players based on tweets from Citizen as well. And that broke yesterday. So to come into a game this, I mean, Shasta said he's working with the team for the rest of the split, but it's still mm-hmm. something that eats away at you when any manager, any coach leaves, let alone somebody who has been so impactful to this game. Yeah. I mean, he is, you know, no matter how things have gone down with G2 over the past couple of years, uh, Shas is the most decorated coach in the history of Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, that's a fact that nobody can dispute. And having this sort of change, especially now in the middle of the stage, is definitely going to be, you know, something that weighs on your mind. But you would think a team like G2 and an organization like that also will be able to stand this major test and continue through it. And, you know, if if last game day's result speaks for anything, it's for that you know prof- professionality of the squad. But just like they're mentioning on the desk, this is the true test. Fabian expects this one today to be the real deal. And should G2 be able to go up against MRM, and especially accounting for Heroic's loss today, that could spell some pretty good news for the squad that have been looking for the second major of the year. They still made it to, you know, the first major. Can they make it off the back of Heroic again? And Skyscraper is the place we go to. Okay, Sky, what are you going to offer us? Hopefully something a little bit sharp for these two teams that have both had their own struggles and their own journeys. But at this point, it's a play day dead ahead of them and seeing what they can try and pull out of each other Eminem they've been on a bit of an up and up they've been able to have some moments and obviously Nello sort of got himself in a position on the previous interview he wants to build and get a bit further into this and this could be a good moment because technically you're looking at an opponent that could also be knocking at the top four in the same way that you are as you grow into this yeah Big questions now on how skyscrapers skyscraper will go down a 4g2 and i don't know if it's still been decided you know what side really gets more of a favorable site um you know play on skyscraper at least in europe it does not get played often so getting to see this is not a usual thing i know the map has been in for a while but i don't think a side or a team also in the region has established dominance just yet but in the meantime, it's Eminem just, just going through the usual motions, which is, hey, we're going to try a breaching on this northern side, take control of the opposite end of the map where the defense is actually happening, which is the Geisha T room. And then from there, try to engage and drop on onto site. Overwhelm it once a time gets through. But the checklist is a pretty major one in Sky. The approach starts here over the top and the focus towards Alama Harding onto Drum. It's the important split of this mm-hmm. second story. The way you can try and funnel and push people over towards the side of Dragon, sure, but it's this bit of a pinch pressure here, and that comes from Nello on the side of Geisha. You sort of catch the rotation. Similar to ways that you're looking at the separation between the top floor of Clubhouse, here is the same. They've seen that it's free territory on the opposite side, and they can now move across and focus on construction on club but here it is this dragon area with the shield caught out on the other side the swing is much tougher and they have to fall back a little bit further so now this drum take how will it go smoke is out and also destroying the flores drone before it's the right time drone before we can actually get into position take down that powerful shield salt off has made it into sight doki taking a lot of damage here playing by the black boxes but Samas still alive. Where, where's the support here for Solotov? He's solo and Doki has just slipped through the attack. What's happened there? Well, that's it. He's been able to find a little bit of a new location. They've got control of Drum. They've dropped two shields and it's a steady sort of slow bit of progress. And now the focus comes towards gold and getting this bit open popped. Solotov, he's moved into Geisha, the slightly new free area that they might be able to play some pinch here. There's still players underneath. There's still a presence and there's still a bit of a dangerous drive you have to make towards the site itself. But G2, they're aware of this and they're aware that they can try and cause some problems. Eminem, they've had a steady roll across the top and now they've just got that final tricky step to make. Force the player outside, almost oh. get the catch. There it is, Tyrant locks in, removes Alamau. Finally, some blood happens around gold, 30 seconds, and the push has to come towards this plant. It has to come in now. Citizen playing behind that diffuser. Nello is going in for the plant, almost setting it down on the floor. And there it is. The diffuser has been planted in the meantime. Impacts out into Nello that will do damage. He's sitting in the cubby solo. But what can Virtue do to stop this here? Prano is coming in on the flank through 
that a staircase. Doki takes down Tyron, but in the meantime, unable to take down the second. What'll be Il Virtue walking up the staircase. Solotov's taking one down, but Drum, there's two players waiting in there for that position. Prano, can he sneak through? Virtue has been taken down. Solotov just using the LMG to his advantage, but Citizen shutting him down, leaving it in a two versus two. Uses a Neo across the line. Uses will find one with the AK-12. Drum, the power position, is doing so well as Yuzu's gets another M&M collecting the first round. Eminem, very good push and pressure and prod of the players further and further out of the control that they seem they wanted to have of the map. It's the thing about Sky, as I said, it starts in that similar way. They cut off the rotation, they cleared the territory next to it, and the next focus was on that divide between Drum and the gantry on the opposite side. The clearance of the two shields without being able to catch a player. Okay, it was a bit of a slip through, but they made sure they kept the pressure moving. They made sure that every single step they were doing was something that drove them closer and closer towards the site itself. And, well, it doesn't really matter if you have the players killed in a situation where you have the post plant and then you have that little bit of a lockdown, a bit of a back and forth with the first kill going to your favor, leads to you having the player with one eye left. Well... What happens now for G2 in the round? They're bringing the Valkyrie, which, you know, you're not really thinking of Valkyrie much because usually she gets banned. So not a lot of teams are actually able to run her, even if they wanted to. But might be the adaptation. There's a lot of places for you to set up those uh, black eyes, really give you a lot of info and intel on your opponents as they walk into this building. There's no more of that whole, hey, we are gonna put Valkyrie camps outside. That's no longer a thing. But I think Skyscraper is one of the perfect maps and probably the best maps uh, to actually set up cams properly and use those to your advantage. There's still one that hasn't been deployed by Citizen, but otherwise you're looking at a Thunderbird also from Prano. Citizen might be eyeing an attack here. He's going to need a bit more info and maybe throwing out one camera to gauge the situation and then diving out might be the play for it. Triton's watching and waiting. There it is. It's almost uh, lost that feed. You're limited to those 10 seconds, but it's just not going to run out. Probably the smart decision to make in this situation. Play back, play your advantage with cams inside. Well, I think that's it with Valkyrie. I mean, obviously, it was a terror now, an internal terror in their own way, and the MPX in the right hands can be a beam, but you can still play a bit of a high risk there, and the high reward just didn't come through it on the other side. Now they're going to steady their way through. The IQ is going to try and pick apart and piece apart the other remaining problems and cameras as they once again go for this take over the top it is still that fragmented approach here on the top floor it's a game of two halves that you play generally on one half <coughs> and here they've at least been able to get to the other side of it so tyrant droning in making sure there's nobody sitting here as he's far away in shrine of course with these drones uh one nade's going to be locked in by one of the whammy discs and the second grenade will say a lot finally but there's nobody on the other side. Doki's gonna be forced out of the room, but not much more than that. Oh, might have been able to find the Oryx of Alamao in the meantime. There's two players sitting inside of the bar down in the center of the first floor. Solotov's on to something, but he needs more support. He cannot be the one droning for himself. Bit of damage done here on the cross, at least we've heard, but no, maybe healed up by the Thunderbird that had set up or Kuna stations uses to take a lot of damage on the IQ that, again, we do not get to see often, but a response to the Valkyrie. Holding, waiting, and trying to find that little pocket that they can apply the pressure in, but there is still a presence in Geisha, and that could be the big blow right now because it's all wasted time. They cannot get the kit down until they get that kill. They swing around and get the first on the stair set, though. Somehow, Alamau is that one gone. Virtue playing on the back of Black. Doki's getting into the next engagement. As I said, they got to clear him out, but he gets the kick cold. 30 seconds. No. Doesn't get his escape. A very important refrag, but also the time that he wasted above could turn out to be monumental. Virtue ducks down. Prano knocked out. Now they're putting a little bit of that flat danger and damage down towards the site, but you're still looking at a pocket full of seconds and a player trying to get the spray down. Neo's tucked in the corner. Yuzus gets himself a triple, leaves just Virtue. Finds Yuzus on the reverse vertical, but it's a post plant, and it is still a spread out hold. You can see the m, &M players. They have themselves down the supply line of structure. It's pantry, it's above, and it's one just tucked around on the corner of the site. Really nothing Virtue can do at this point. Far from throw impacts and try and at least take one, but unfortunately not to be found. 
Not to be found, solid off grip position. There's no need for you to push out of the site once the plant is set. You only do it and get over, I guess, not really over aggressive. You will push your advantage deeper into site before you plant to create more time and zone out defenders. In this case, that diffuser is planted almost instantly, diving in through the window into kitchen, getting the plant down, and then falling back. There's no reason for you to attempt to take a you know bigger space, especially when it had turned into a 3v1. The move has to be made by the defense and g2 did not have much of an option nice shot for virtue as he looked upstairs and took down uh, salt off but users excuse me but that's about it that you'll get in the round defense a bit having a bit of a rough time here but maybe that is the expectation and i lo really liked the iq as an adaptation to citizens valkyrie now how much citizen had an impact with his black eyes not too sure, which will explain why M&M are not picking the IQ again. They go for the Amaru instead of the Thermite that gets swapped out for Yuzu's Ace. So two swaps in for the attackers on the M&M side with Neo bringing the oh-so-powerful Ying. Very easy to flood the site and keep digging very much past the defense. Doki now is going to be the one that steps into the idea of, let's see if anybody's outside the building. Hey, there's a close rappel and a rope that's going to slowly not do anything. Swings in the floor underneath and doesn't take the fight that they might have expected. So, Doki, is he actually going to be able to run out from this? There's no reason to, really. You already had one hole open uh, on, the, on the upper floor. You're not going to find anyone here going into the stock area. So, Tyrant's going to walk into bedroom. Just take bottom floor control bit by bit but there it is the citizen cam is giving info finally we get to see it in action thank you very much medics our observer for giving us the intel that is oh so needed the tyrant has not been able to find that entry yet and nobody from g2 has either but Eminem, they've been a bit slow on their approaches before they know how to handle the time when it comes to it and it seems like g2 are the ones that are trying to just keep the structure into their favor as a cheeky almost catch. Prana takes a lot of damage, but look at this, the pings onto the side of Pantry. They had an awareness of the player. They can see the Valkyries making some movements, and Solotov's going to step into the fight, but the pressure comes down the stairs itself. They are isolated, but they're a problem. And the play that was being done by the opposite side on the stairs made sure that Eminem weren't comfortable swinging it. They're able to retreat. They're able to pull themselves back, keep it a five versus five, and keep some of the control. If they want to take the drop onto the gantry down drum, they could. They're going to opt and hold off for now and hope that the hold on the site stays together. Yep. Alamo's got to prove to everybody that his position is definitely worth holding. There's the nade out, and Prana will take a lot of damage, but that's the power of the Thunderbird. Your Kona stations will bring you back up to close to full HP in this case. You're at 55, 60 health. You can do a lot of work remaining alive and holding the staircase, where, let's be fair, there's no reason for you to ever attempt to walk up the stairs when you know that there's a defender watching out for you. There's the Ying out in uh, full action. Neo's going to get taken down. Or no, that's Nello in the meantime that's going to get taken down. Uses dragged out, but Neo's going to rush in. The flashes are doing work, but it's still an advantage for G2. One left alive, and that's Neo on his own, having to protect his position. He gets oh. two out of it. No citizen in the wrong spot at the wrong time. At least a positive for Prano that he's able to get himself back up to full HP. Neo will do the same. Remember those Kona stations, they work both ways. Not just for all the holes have been opened up. 10 seconds left and Prano is holding on to drum solo. Neo still has the diffuser in hand. He can plant at any point in time. He's gotta be careful which position he ends up choosing to go for. And this amount of time might allow Neo to fire back. Should be planting the right moment. There it is, swings the other side, but it's Prano to win and out. Neo, nice try, but it's Prano. Doing the work, getting the kills necessary. Happy with that win. I mean, I think the kill onto Citizen was a surprise to him as much as it was to anybody else. It was a bit of the drop down the hatch. And when you've got an LMG in your hands, they do you do that sort of fight well. The fight over two stories early. And I believe the perfect time to do so. Doki speaking to his teammates, getting everybody back in action. 
making sure that they don't lose the momentum, which is, you know, a very open word. There's no real way to describe it in terms of, like, practical uh, impact on the match. But at least telling his teammates, hey, got to pull it together. Here's strategy. Let's put it in. Let's get another round. We need it to happen. Don't get too aggressive. And I, I love seeing that. Very well timed. <laughs> you, do you? Is it one of your favorite things to say? Uh, honestly, it's my favorite. Uh, as some would say, um, you know, sick. finding finding the right words when you're when you're barely functional after the past week or you know a, a you week don't of have barely to tell functioning. Me twice. No, uh, you know exactly what I'm feeling. I do. So we'll yeah. shake on it. Play virtually. by play, ca play by play casting um, in a heat wave in England. There's a heat wave going around. Same in France. With the yeah, but you've got AC. I don't. Well, I can't you, use it. My you voice do, would you can turn it on. Okay, that's true. Okay, uh, I'll give you that. I have to have the windows closed because I have already had no noise complaints. Yeah. Um, and I have COVID, and Tyrant almost has a fire. There's in his a noise hands. complaint from the outside and skyscraper, I can tell you that. If you're mm. shooting outside the windows, there's going to be a noise complaint. Oh, well, they look like they want to try and do a little bit more of it. Caught the drone. Just before they went a little bit further onto the swing there, Citizen's going to pull back. Again, G2 moving around as a pair. That sort of exploration of the map, we saw it in the previous round where there was the success, Doki and Citizen sort of holding hands, skipping through and trying to put bullets into anyone that they came across. It's obviously been a bit of a conversation to complain about some of G2's plays, is that sometimes it feels a little bit disjointed and a little bit separated. If they can find a way to funnel that insane gun skill, into that sort of joint effort, it could be incredible. It definitely could be. Now, what can uh, go down on this assault? There's still no control on the key positions, or at least it is just going to be established right now, which is taking control of drum, taking control of the entire hallway that would allow you to drop into the site, breach that wall, and get on it. You got the ace for it, you got the thermite, you got the florist, you got the thatcher, you have all the tools necessary. So. Eminem have scouted things out very well in the prep phase and made sure that they have the proper set for it in operators there it is even the shield being taken down on the site uh, unfortunately that rotation hole is going to come back to bite g2 in this spot i mean it was a very well driven drone i said they were good at getting mm. rid of those shields and getting control of the space before they've done it in a slightly different approach here but there's a slightly different hold from g2 almost expecting to lose that territory and trying to pull some of that utility back a little bit further so they can try and have it at the most important part, rebuffing the plant itself. The Flores drones still trying to roll out. That one doesn't quite make the full journey and adventure. And well, as the smoke canisters, as I said, stop it. There's still this focus of utility. There's still this idea that we can stop this plant getting itself put down. The tucking of the players underneath. No free catch on Alamau inside gold this time. He's more attuned and aware and has a little bit more wiggle room. But it's slowly having bullets filtered through it. There's another smoke canister. There's another stop on Tyrant. This grenade might get the final catch, but Eminem just has to go for it. Driving themselves through. There goes Alamau. They've got themselves wrapped around and Solotov somehow found somebody underneath. But Doki stops the bleeding and Virtue doubles it down and doubles himself to use and Solotov knocked off the board. A handful of seconds left and Tyrant also all that is there g2 find their second in a row very well done by g2 and m&m could not capitalize on their position by all intents and purposes they had every single key point locked down they got the right kills at the right time there was no contention from the bottom floor but you saw m&m trying to take gunfights that simply were not necessary but also not firing or suppressing any players that would be, for example, on the staircase or in the hallway, key positions that you would find and you would be, a, you know, you would need to engage with at some point. So some confusion in kind of the haze and days of the last 10 seconds before Eminem, but G2 capitalized on it. And this is what I love about G2 in its history is that one thing you can't take away from them is that when things get really, really loud and really kind of action packed, they're still able to keep it calm and bring it together. And that round was an excellent example of how to get it done. But the question is, can they keep on doing it? One of the more balanced maps, at least in terms of halves here for us in the EU League. Will this turn into an advantage for G2 in the first half? That's definitely something they're looking for, which they have not had so far in this first half, tying it up 2-2. Two to two. 
I mean, it's been a bit better from G2, as I said. We're seeing that sort of connectivity and we're seeing that good approach in terms of fighting back on the defense. It's not the truest taste. And obviously we're still getting the full bite out of what Skyscraper can offer teams, let alone specific teams. But if it's something where we start to see a bit of a drive of momentum, that could be the most important factor across the two halves. The drawing game still improving, still coming together from Eminem. They've had a lot of reveals from the players and just not had the, I guess, idea to go and get the swings. It seems like they're much more happy and confident getting a full player close down on a player rather than going for the risky one versus ones, which against the team oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's made up of players that can do things like that. It makes sense. Users tries to get the pick up on Doki, but Doki has slipped away once again, arm in arm with Citizen. They're making sure they have that support structure. That's a great slap there from Doki, and that's the power of the MX4. You can tell this is partly why Alibi gets run. We talked about it a couple of games ago, or we talk about it here. The MX4 is good. You can do work, and then you have a very flexible kit on the Alibi. There's a reason why the operator is used as extensively as she is here in the EU League. The Tyrant being shot down is great here. No more grenades. The Yana is always kind of... This operator can do a lot of damage in any point in time in the round. Great gun, great utility and all. So removing that is a great advantage that G2 might be able to capitalize upon. But drones in front of M&M, can they though find these long angle kills? Wow, Solotov is found mm. by Doki, who's still able to get these quick strikes in. He's really lit up over the past couple of rounds and made big problems for Eminem's steady approach. It's still a slightly different hold and pull back. As I said, they have this synergy working alongside each other at this point, but they're making sure that they still pop their heads up and cause a bit of trouble on the way out the door. Users is trying to find his way slowly through it, and the push of Neo comes on the split side. Nobody is revealed on the top of the black stairs as they can't quite get the full catch. Virtue finds Nello, and Doki finds one more. Looks for the final connection. They know where he is. They know that there's nowhere for him to really go with 40 seconds. Doki's looking for the fight oh, with no. everything he's got. <laughs> it's a full <laughs> all us for G2. Great on Doki here. He, he did an excellent job, obviously, the whole round, but Doki's ability to just move around the map and keep his opponents on lock the whole time is definitely impressive. G2 Korean towards the end of this first as the, the team that we know today. It was the same thing. This is a team that could do a lot. You know, a lot of young players also being added in. It took time and it happened eventually. There's nothing that would say that this history would not repeat again with the EU League team, especially the UCL team that came in. This is their first stage they get to play, or sec sorry, their second stage, their first year that they get to play here in EUL. So a lot of potential for m, &M. It's just how realized will it be? For all the engineers out there, I uh, ask you to take out your vector diagrams. It's time for us to do a bit of math. Oh, no. What is the unrealized potential of m, &M? I'm not Why an engineer myself, so here we are. Why? Maths yes. Is, maths, maths is the worst. Math. Maths is worst. <laughs> English <laughs> is too. I agree. <laughs> okay, Eminem. Two timeouts used in the opening half. If there's ever a little flag that waves that says this is an important game for both teams, yeah, that's the one. We'll start to see dreams of Berlin dying sooner rather than later, and that divide in the middle getting closer and closer. If Eminem take the full three points from this game, they actually leapfrog themselves up into fourth place, currently at least, and obviously that might be subject to change depending on what happens, I believe, still with games in hand, but still. It's a place you want to be if you found yourself already going through some of the toughest rivals. G2, they would find themselves level with Eminem if they take this. Obviously taking the head-to-head, -head, pushing them a little bit further ahead. But the journey of a thousand steps to the 100 yards you're away from the venue at Berlin starts with but a single three points. Now, this moment... This bit of a hole, this push, it'll start to formulate and bring itself together here. Doki, 
He's keeping a keen eye on the split there, the hold either side as the swing starts its way. It's progress over the top, as I said. The telling tale of this might be where we find ourselves on the opposite split. A bit of attention is paid round onto gold. The spray, the prey, and the pop down. Not going to stick around and find out how the story ends, because usually it's bloodshed and you don't want that until at least another 30 seconds have passed. But still, this Roman movement game from G2 has been very well put together. Almost suffered Solotov, who hit the pre-fire and almost hit it again there. Doki getting double banged up by the single position as Solotov goes to take over control of Dragon. What's the potential here? Look at the rotation for Virtue. He dropped the hatch and can rotate back if he wants to through the staircase, but he actually has support near him. Now, I'm thinking maybe there's a bit too much to have in that uh, first floor, but oh, Alamau missing. Not sure what happened there at the cross, but is at least gonna hold on to the bar. In the meantime, Virtue is able to walk back up the stairs, leaving Citizen down below still but it's that upper bit that's proving difficult to take back Solotov. One onto Prano, a pre-play C4 that could be used up later on. And just slowing things down for a moment here, Eminem trying to breach into sight. That's it, they're trying to put a flat bit of pressure around. There's pings on player locations, but it's such a no man's land at this point, Virtue. He's holding the swing, ready to rock and roll. As soon as anybody steps on that floor, it's an explosion followed by a player. There it is, Nello caught out, but Tyrant bites back. And now he's got to try and filter his way towards the site itself. Alamau is all that's left, but not for very long, an even half. An even half, not too bad here, which kind of coincides with how this map goes in overall in the league. Again, you might be looking at statistics that account for all the regions for this past six months. But here in Ewell, Skyscraper does not get played so often, especially not as often as it does in other regions. That's for sure. We saw it uh, last play date was Rogue versus Outsiders. I won't tell you how that uh, went down. You'll have to go and watch that game. It'll be a quick watch. I'm just going to tell you that. Uh, otherwise, it was on play date number two before that. So... That's it. This is the third time we get to see this in EUL as a map, uh, and that is in 24 matches seen these times. So that tells you something about the league and where it usually goes to, but G2 are now on the attack. They're bringing the Osa, they're bringing the Ying, and the beauty of uh, our new system that's been added over the past few months is that you can just switch up any attacker that you want in the prep phase, but there will be no swaps over from anybody of G2. The m and are running. In the meantime, the Warden, which is a perfect counter to the Smoke, Ossa, plus Ying combination that we're seeing from G2. I'm curious to see what the growth could be from that. It is a setup and it's a creative attack that could get itself delivered on good grounds, but you're also up against the Warden of Tyrant. You're up against somebody who has the magical goggles that can stop a lot of the magical play that might be in the pockets here. And it also comes at the cost of synergy. Being able to get that delivery hasn't always been the best part of the G2 supply line. It might be the start here. The pressure on Geisha. The attempt at the removal of that player with Prano and the Ossa setting themselves up towards the top of Black Stairs. The back side of the site is one where you have to pay a bit of attention to. The multifaceted focus means that somebody's got to start this party off. And no bangs, though, to start this all off here. We're at the two-minute mark, so no assault has happened thus far. The G2 are all piled up at the doorway, awaiting their push into that tea room and karaoke space. But you see how Eminem are playing from the outside of it. This is unusual. Usually teams like what happened when Eminem were on the attack, they'll be attacking from the opposite end of the map through Dragon, through Drum, and then making their way into sight. Eminem could play this as a retake, but given the positions that you have on this map, retakes are not always something that you can prime yourselves for when you got Windows and LMGs to deal with especially not when there's an Ossa on the field where these extra power positions could be set up by the attackers themselves. Speaking of which, Prano a bit of damage, but the rest of G2 setting up to go. Nello is doing as much as he can to hold on to the core of this site, this hold. It's the first time that we've seen someone try and directly strike from underneath, but it's not quite getting the full catch that they want. It was something where Eminem instead sort of 
had it locked in. A little bit of a soft gave them more to work with. The Candelas start to scream their way, and there's Doki getting that confirmation on that player and pushing themselves up that staircase. It gives you a very powerful cross angle, and you can see that they've actually had to pull themselves M, &M a little bit back inside drum and hope that they can try and cut off the execute. Solotov pops up, pops Doki back down. The rest of G2 sat sort of on the edges the breach and the break is ready and willing to go but they just need that now new first push citizen is trying to find the head of the player that's spraying towards them but eminem aren't giving them the territory and they know they don't quite have the lockdown and it's a big final rotate here for the osser it's a long hefty map to make this sort of change up of a play at this moment but they have no real other options, so they're going to try and utilize the Talon Shield and drive that in towards the site and the plant itself. If they can buy themselves a pocket of space, they can make use of it. Citizen gets a kill. Oh. They don't get the shield down. That's the most important part. The man with the magical glasses has them pop on at the right possible time. Virtue sprays and gets them down. They can't quite get the full connection with the kid. It's the two versus one post plant, and it's not very long. Eminem find their first defense. Very well done here for Eminem to hold on. Look at Solotov already in 11 to 4. The man is on fire. Nello, all his skills are being stolen by his teammate. That's how we're going to say. I'm sure that's what he's going to say. Should we get to the interview? Definitely a confirmation from his compatriot, Medics, who is our observer, of course, for this game. The two Croats that make the league happen. That's all I'm going to say about that topic. <laughs> they that's drive sure. the league. They drive the <laughs> yes, they're shipping the league to Berlin. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. There you go. That's all you need to know. G2 That's bring the Amaru potentially. Yes. That's all. You know, what more would you want, Emma? What are you asking for? Oh, too much. Indeed. Oh, <laughs> no, you're right. They do drive the league, and this game has now been driven a little bit by Nello, who, to be honest. Well, it needs to drive something. Zero to seven at mm -hmm. this point hasn't quite had that full connection. And we've just seen Kanto, another old experience head, have a zero to ten in their game versus Wolves. Sure, it is still an even match and Solotov is popping off. But one loose wheel in a game where nine of the players are connecting, sometimes that's all it takes, unfortunately, for the other team to get that control. Yep, it's, it's still a shooter, you know? If you're doing well, you can propel your team over that line. And so far, Eminem's kills have been coming down to Solotov, but there he is. I mean, speak of the devil. Uh, what a rascal there. Doki taken down a bit of a taste of his own medicine. MPX on the other MPX operator. That'll open things right up for Eminem on the round, and G2 find themselves one Yana short. And that is not a short joke, by the way. Those are just an ARX and a couple grenades rolling down on the ground. It's not going to feel good for G2 on this setup here. They now have at least something else they can try and build behind, though, which is that missing player. Sometimes it can drive a team, and sometimes it can try and bring some focus, and the lack of focus has been something that had them in a tricky last second rotate on the previous round. Neo, in the meantime... He's buying as much time as possible as the Florist drone starts trying to wear their way around and take care of some of the utility on the opposite side. The first one is the catch. There goes one of those little walls from the blade, and there goes a smoke canister. Just to buy you a second at this point and make sure nobody's trying to move and swing behind it. Virtue now setting up with his Rataro drones. Coming up. Uh, some stuff being destroyed here, which is not, you know, not great. I just want to have as much of your util as possible to use up on those shields. Nays being cooked up here, and it will go down onto Dragon, but Solotov, it doesn't matter for him. Shrapnel or not, he's got uses also in the backline support. Taken down two. Alamau snapped back to reality. Back to Brazil on this one. Two players left from G2 and Citizen and Prano. And Eminem are looking for a perfect half. There's one more for Solotov. He's just collecting all of them. Citizen left alive with what more than just a hope. Solotov on 15 kills, and doorways are literally being locked off of him. There you go. Finally, Solotov taken down, but to what avail? Well, Citizen has another four players to try and dig his way through, and about 10 seconds per player puts you in a bit of maths that doesn't quite work its way out too favorably. Another canister stops 
the rotate through what was his only option. The gun six is going to give him at least another one, but there's a C4 that's about to swing his way. Doesn't even make the catch, though. It's Yuzus that locks it in. Eminem. They find two rounds in a row. The first time anyone's been able to do that since pretty much the opening of the game. One more and they secure themselves, OT. At least. The advantage that they have been looking for here, Eminem. Two rounds differential is absolutely fantastic for you. Give yourself the space. Just in case there's a loss or a mistake happens there, you don't have to worry about it. Keep in mind, both teams have already used up their tactical timeouts. It's unusual, but both were used in the first half. Personally, I'm a fan of actually using your timeout rather than never using it because you'd be surprised how many teams don't touch it until the end of the game or literally their last round before they lose. So maybe they get one and then they take an L after it. So it's good that everything's being used up. But here the question is, can Eminem keep this streak up? And can they keep Doki down, really? That last round started off with a bang. Solotov got a fantastic kill on a Doki. And from that moment on, G2 were knocked off base instantly. I mean, I guess it was something I said in the previous round. I want to mm -hmm. focus on the main man, the creation, not being able to get the connection. But it might be the thing that pulls you apart. And I did mention... Even if Solosov's having a big game, but apparently it's bigger than big. And maybe that's the thing that makes you laugh for it. It's a drive-through. And obviously his performance in that previous round, again, if you are up against the super team of Fraggers, regardless of how well they're performing at the minute, you definitely want your big pocket players to pop off. Solosov definitely is now. And they just push this over the final line. Tyrant is eyeing up the idea of a swing round here onto the breach, but it's about to be under a little bit more pressure in just a moment as the wall gets popped. Doki finds Neo, Solotov finds Alamau. Trade for trade and blow for blow with nobody getting an immediate pickup onto either, but Doki is currently knocking on at least the castle door of the site, making some issues for the player that's playing on the top of Black Stairs. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem there, the Ying being taken down. And especially more since Eminem are not bringing a Warden for this match. Of course, G2 have the opportunity to drone and actually react to what the defenders are doing. Thank God that has been an addition over the past six months. But uh, this is something that has got away on G2. They, yes, Alamau has not had an impact on this match just yet, going 1-8-3. But those in Candelas plus the smoke would have been fantastic for a push on the site. Especially given that you can breach pretty easily into this kitchen position from the window and plant effectively from there. Nitro being ripped open by Nello, maybe a pre-placed one uh, to set up here, but I won't be seeing much of that just yet. G2 really stalling for time. Reloading. Stalling might not be the question. Stalling might not be the word. Oh no. Jokey, that was almost a flashback to bank. It wasn't this time around. That second grenade gets loose through the door. It was Citizen. It was just on the swing. They're going to ping the breach and try and push the player out from behind the back of barbecue. They're going to find themselves in what is a very tricky situation. They almost get the kill out of it. They have the smarts to move based on the audio of it being planted. Can't quite get it out. It's the trade between the two, but they get the breach open. 40 seconds. And uses he's creeping his way over the top. Those pings on the player. There's a bit of a reveal as Nello gets closer and closer, hoping to find something. Doesn't quite get the right angle. The close C4 doesn't get the catch either, but they've tucked themselves over the side of Sushi. Citizen was watching the back stairs and was able to take care of one 20 seconds and a three versus two. Citizen walking in and no Nello's watching. The Nitro will miss. Virtue taken down uses in the meantime. A bit of a pre-fire from Nello. This is the moment for him to shine. He's already collected one kill. They know exactly where he is. Can he go for the pre-fire? One of the players is busy. And I'll continue busy dropping that diffuser down. Virtue will save the round. And G2 get one more on the board. They're first in the second half. Well, it was the third site. And that's the one thing to take into the consideration here is... Is that the deal breaker? Is that the difference maker? Is that going to be the thing that potentially puts them not in a state of suffering <coughs> but in a moment where they might be able to pull things together karaoke well, tea is where we go locate and as many bombs as they can. i don't know what that means is that a reference or something um 
they're saying a player in this game is having the game of their life. Ah, is that what it means? I yeah. wonder why they they call them that. Um, I gotta brush up on my siege lingo. Not gonna lie, I'm t too old. Uh, well, <laughs> for a lot of things, it's you assume just a loving mm -hmm. nickname. A loving nickname it is. Thank you very much. I'm always looking for clarification uh, from you. Always pays out. But you I know mean, what? You're so, the one that runs the interview. If you get a chance to, interview I'm not doing Jesus. anything. It's it's Tim. Okay. I. I'm just Tim holding on here, my dear. <laughs> for dear life. So, Nello on the dummy for the round. Not sure where it's gonna be run here. At least. The bottom um, floor. Walking on up. Well, I guess at this point you're looking at Eminem as having the chance to push themselves from that point on this round. As I said before, the site rotation was something that came through and the struggle here was G2 didn't quite have that final moment of execute. Hey, they're coming. All right, let's leave. Seems to be the MO this time. I pointed out Doki was able to do a bit of a strike underneath the core stairs of this site last time. They're not opting for the same approach here because it didn't quite well, have the same success. If we recall, Eminem actually got themselves entirely set round onto the side of drum and from that position, we're able to pretty much stall out G2 and G2 isn't gonna fall for that again. So instead, they're gonna start their work here on the opposite side where Eminem ended their round, get control of rafters, get control of drum, and then maybe go back to the approach on the top of black stairs instead. Either way, you'll do hopefully at least enough from the G2 books to put some fear into them. Doki caught on his way out the door just by a spray round. Tyrant still has a shield. It's a bit of a power position, and he's going to lean into that now. Refires a couple of angles and then tucks himself in as the breach comes towards the side of Geisha. There you go. Opening up the wall. Now the entry is uh, at least facilitated, but... How far can you walk in with how Eminem have set up around that breached wall? You can always kind of corner your opponents in there, especially if G2 decide to have too many players sitting in. Nello will go in and close out that breach to make it extra difficult for G2 to do anything of the sort. You're going to need to use one of your sets of grenades for that set. Doki's going to find the kill on the Yuzus. He gets incredibly aggressive, actually barging through the Surya Gate and destroying that default cam. You might think that this is a very and a uh, aggressive and weird take but doki's play here might have been the perfect one given the utility that was destroyed and the power position that was shut down and taken through now he's going to walk in and use the breach in the wall to his advantage the one that the defense has set up for rotations alamao finding his kill on a tyrant things looking great for g2 and a 5v3 Wanted to try and take the fight with whoever just played the grenade and citizens actually gonna just swing around at the last second um, quite get the true angle. Solotov finds them. 20 seconds. They've still got to get the kit down. And now it's the four versus three versus two. As they at least stop the roll of Doki, who bit big into this round. They've tucked themselves into the site, but there it is. Solotov with a rotation. The C4 attempt doesn't get the catch. It's Nello to find Alamau. It's Virtue to put them in the one versus one. The other player is down underneath. Virtue has the kit. He's looking for at least somewhere that might be deemed safe. Nello is going for the quick sprint all the way up. He's not going to make it in time but he might get the pop-up there's the ping there's the reveal there's the player the rotation and the pre-fire and virtue's just tucked in the corner as best as he can holding onto the angle and hoping he gets it right by the audio it's pre-fires oh! <laughs> oh! and there it is just out on the brink eminem put themselves oh! onto map point <laughs> are you serious Oh my god, the Croatian sensation. I'm sorry, Medics. You're going to lose that title after that headshot from Nello. Beautifully played the one tap to end it all. And putting Eminem on match point. One round away from uh, total victory against G2. That'll be, again, the big test that Fabian was talking about on the desk. If G2 can take down Eminem, then this will be the real one. This will prove that G2 have had the changes that are oh so necessary. And a reminder, we talked about this earlier on in the cast, you and I, Emmy, that Shas will be off of the team, basically, by the end of the stage, but still here to live out and ride out the entire stage with the team. So hopefully for G2, this might say something, but... 
at least G2, they cannot get all three points in this game. Might turn out the same as we had another game earlier on today with an opponent that the G2 are very much associated with here in EU League. And heroic that is, but going to come down to a lot of work on the attacking side and Nook being brought up by Alama. That's the big blow right now on the side of G2, especially after Secret were obviously able to pull some success earlier on today, is you're only as sort of safe as how close you are to the bottom of the board, regardless of where you are on the top, and they're still dangerously close, and now not being able to get the full fat points in this, let alone maybe any, to be decided over these final two rounds. It's not just important about the upcoming major, it's important about their upcoming future in terms of keeping themselves competitive. But Nello, Eminem, led behind, has started to find a little bit of that energy, a little bit of that spark. Obviously, I know I've highlighted him a couple of times. Solotov sitting 19 to 7. Really just being a massive flag waver for Eminem right now. So, what do G2 do? They're already in the, in the building, at least. That's something. But Alama has to sneak through defenses, utility, and a shotgun looking, staring right down into the doorway. And for that, uh, there's going to be a lot more than just a gun to be used up against him. Alamo uh, losing one of the drones, also having a drone in front of him that could give him info. But Tyron is just holding on. Oh, so close here. The bullet is rattling right above. And Doki might be the one for support, but it's going to fall back. There's also, uh, you saw those Wumai this sediment set up. So G2 at least gained the position, but gained it without doing any damage. In uh, this case, uh, to their opponent, We're just able to destroy whatever position is left six grenades and they've loosed over half of them now on a single stair set that hasn't really netted anything but a bit of damage they also tried to rebuild the breach just done around on the side of the vip the top and oh there's a pop onto a Pisma. tyrant looks for the follow-up there though he's retaken the position that they're still using more grenades to clear that one does a lot of damage to zolotov doesn't quite get the full connection and kill oh. the second one surely does six grenades spent one body found and a bit of damage done with 50 seconds now to try and do that final pressure and stress to the site Neo watching out. In fact, Solotov has been shot down. A beautiful grenade, finally, but it used up all the grenades that were available for G2. That's three sets of grenades. And is it worth it is the question for what it eventually is just a warden. But then it's Solotov. So at some point, you gotta you gotta get let those grenades ring. Neo will find a kill on Adoki and Yuz gets the second. G2 unable to breach effectively. But I say that in the meantime, Prano is getting the plant down. Virtual will get one kill. He knows there's one more player in Neo right behind the bar here, sitting inside a lounge. But Yuz has gotten one. Look at the peek around the corner from Virtue. Makes it happen. Two left and tired and Yuz is swinging around the corner. Virtue will not be able to collect the kill. He's the last one alive. He gets the kill on a Yuzu. We've seen this so many times with Virtue left alive. But this time, he'll lose it out. Tyron collects the kill. Eminem, victorious against G2. What a day. Just pushing it over the line there at the end. It was a lot of trades, a lot of scrappy fights, and a lot of final 30-second pushes for both teams. But Eminem, they were just able to do enough on the first half where both teams took their tack time out. 